and to put Christ on and baptism before it's eternally and everlasting too late. Yes. Father God, we continue to pray for uh, our loved ones there, Father God, and, and those who are uh, sick and those who are uh, afflicted there, Father God, in the nursing homes yes. and other there places, Mercy. Father God. We ask you to continue to bless them and be with them there, Father God, uh, uh, during their, uh, their time there, Father God. Uh, continue to uh, lift them up there, Father God. And, and help them, dear Father God, in their time of need. Yeah. And Father God, we pray, dear Lord, for this service this morning. And Father, we pray uh, that you will be with our minister. Yes. Uh, help him, dear Father, to recall the things that he has studied. Yes. Help him, dear Father God, to deliver them in a clear and simple manner, dear Father God. And we pray, dear Lord, that you will bless uh, what we're trying to do here at the Hilltop Church of Christ. Yes. We thank you, dear Father God, and appreciate your love and the mercy that's shown toward us. In your son Jesus Christ's name, we pray your thanks. Amen. 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 Man, man. God is good. Even in the midst of this virus, God is good. Let us sing, sing and be happy. 472. Sing and be happy. Let us sing. If the skies above you are gray, you are the end so blue. Trust and pray that 
uh, you come with a heart, uh, wherever you are, wherever you're seeing this at, we pray that you come with a heart that's ready to worship God, uh, because truly he's worthy to be, to be worshipped. It was Jesus, the Messianic master from the dusty shores of Nazareth, who made the declaration when Jesus said in John chapter 4, verse 23 and 24, The hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. We want to go right to our lesson. Yes, you know, we've been doing a series. I'm looking at God's love connection. And in particular, we're talking about the fact that we must love one another. Yeah. In 1 John chapter 4, verse number 7, it was the beloved John who said, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God, and the Bible says, and knoweth God. Mm -hmm. I think that's very powerful. A very, very powerful scripture and the idea that you and I um, must recognize the command to love to love one another and we're going to just pick up right where we left off um, last week we we're talking about um, this love this love that we that we must have this love that we must have for uh, for one another and so as we look um, at the screen get the screen up and we, we look at this this love that God has for us that in fact this is the greatest love yeah. um, that was ever shown to man. Uh, for the Bible tells us uh, in the book of Romans 2 verse 4 and 5 that God is a God who's rich in mercy and great love toward us. Mm -hmm. And that God loved us to that extent. And we find Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 4 again the Bible uh, tells us that this love that God gives us it's an, it's an overwhelming love. And that's why when we read and uh, the verses that we're so familiar with in John 3.16, for God so loved the world uh, that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting, everlasting life. Yeah. When we look at God, the author and the perfecter of love, God is love uh, personified. He, he was the one that, thank God, stepped uh, into our horrible existence yeah. and loved us, my friend, with the love um, that was able to buy us back, to redeem us back. That's what Romans 5 and verse number 8, it tells us that God demonstrated this love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, that Christ died, that Christ died for us. It's a transforming love. That's why the Bible said in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse Number 17, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. All things are passed away, and behold, all things, all things have, have, become, have become new. And so we're grateful um, to God for uh, the awesomeness you know, of this love that God, that God has for us. He tells us, uh, my friend, in the word that this love is a transforming um, love. And it, takes us from being children of wrath to being children, to being children of God. We find that in John chapter 1 and verse uh, number 12 where Jesus, he mentions the idea that, um, that God gave us the ability, the right to become sons of God. We're able to love him supremely, therefore we're able to love one another right uh, because of the way he loved us. Someone asked the question, Brother Pound, well, how does, how does God how does God love us? That's a good question. How does, how does God love us? Well, I want you to know God loves us with the greatest love there is. Uh, that is a love that, that moves uh, to the point where one would lay down his life for his friends. The Bible mentions that in John chapter 15 and verse number 13. Well, the Bible says, greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. The Bible said this, my friends, is a great love. It is a greater love. The Bible talks about how great this love is. It is so great that it is willing to sacrifice itself yeah. for the sake of another. That's a greater love. And that's the way we have been loved. Understand that uh, this does not mean that Jesus loved us, his friends, more than he loved the Father. Because you've got to recognize it means that Jesus loved us best 
because he loved his father most. And we talked about that last week. The idea we can never love, my friend, um, individuals um, better if we don't love God most. We gotta love God. God has to be first. Because the love that we are sharing with other people is the love that God shared with us. John 17, 26, Jesus says, and I have declared unto them thy name. As he prays to the Father, and will declare it, he said that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them, and I in them. Jesus says that we are to love one another with the love that we receive from the Father. And what is he saying? We got to remember the love that God gave us. If we can remember the love he gave us, then my friend, we have no problem loving somebody else. Listen to what Jesus says. He says, and I have declared unto them thy name, thy authority. And Jesus said, I will declare it that the love, watch this now, the love wherewith thou hast loved me, he said, may be in them that same love that God had for his son. Jesus is praying to the Father that that same love be in us. He said, be in them and I in them. And my friend, and if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. The Bible said in 1 John chapter 4 and verse 11, the Bible tells us this in regards to this love that God loved us. He loved us. Therefore, my friend, we ought to love each other. So we see that if we love God most, we can love others better. Thank God for that. How, how we love others, particularly other Christians, reveal how we love God. The Apostle John put it uh, bluntly when John said in 1 John 4, verse 20, he said, He who does not love his brother, whom he hath seen, cannot love God, whom he hath not seen. And so therefore, my friend, we have to be mindful of this. Our love for each other is an indicator of the place God is holding in our hearts. What place does God hold in your heart? My friend, it's based upon a great indicator is the love that we have for one another. God is a very good God in regards to designing things this way. Our faith, my friend, is revealed by our works. In James 2 verse 18, our beliefs are revealed by our action or our deeds. Luke chapter 6 verse number 46, because Jesus said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Mm -hmm. And then Jesus said, why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things that I say do? Then our love for him is revealed by our love for others. 1 John 4 and verse number 20. In other words, these things go hand in hand. Let me just give you that again. God puts this together. Where our faith is revealed by our works, our beliefs are revealed by our actions, and our love for him is revealed by our love for one another. Hmm. It makes it hard for us, therefore, to think this. Hmm. Because this was put together by God. My friend, this is what you call airtight. Yeah. God put this together. And what God has put together, just like marriage, let no man put asunder. Yes, and this is the great kindness, the great kindness of God. In Romans 2 and verse number 4, the Bible says, O oh, despises thou the riches of God's goodness and God's forbearance and long suffering. The Bible says, not knowing that the goodness of God, it leads thee to turn, to turn to God. Repentance is a turning toward God. So this love ought to turn us, to turn us to God. And so therefore, my friend, why should this love, how can this love have the ability to do that? Because when we remember, my friend, the richness of the goodness and the forbearance and the long suffering that God gave to us. When we remember how good God has been to us, then that will cause us to have a change of heart and turn to him. The Bible, my friend, is a powerful book. My friend and sister, greatest and the second commandment are involved in these things. We know that they are important to God. We talked about that last time, that second commandment. But Jesus said the first commandment is to love God with all your heart. The second, he says, like unto the first, he says that we ought to love our neighbor, as I said. We ought to love our neighbors. We must love, must love our neighbors. So perhaps the best thing we can do today, my friend, this morning, is to take an honest and, 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 my friend, and a lingering and a long look into the way we love others and ask God for his grace. We may find that this is the most loving thing we can do for anybody else today. My friend is just depend upon God. Ask God in regard to help us to love one another as we should. Now, my friends, with all of that, it took about three, 
about three messages, and I find out to my first point. I said, find out to my first point. Now, I want to talk about this love because this is all consuming love. I have another 10 minutes here. I want to talk about this love, this, this all consuming love that saints should have. And I was understanding that. What we have to do, my friend, in regards to this love, we have to look at ourselves. And we have to examine ourselves to see whether or not are we using it, aren't we? Individuals who are displaying this kind of love. But first of all, in regards to this love, the Bible said this kind of love that we've been talking about must be put on. You've got to put on this love. In other words, the Bible said in Colossians 3, verse 14, and above all these things, the Bible said put on love. The Bible said that the love is the bond of perfectness. Uh, perfectness. I, per, I said perfectness. It's the idea of perfect gives a maturity. That's what we're talking about. It is the bond of maturity. This love is above everything else. Make sure you put on love. Love is the bond. Love, uh, is, in essence, is the glue, uh, my friend, that holds together uh, those things which are mature. And so, therefore, we got to put it on. Not only must we put on this love, but we got to follow after this love. Listen to the Bible. First Corinthians chapter 14, verse number 1. The Bible says this love, follow after love and desire the spiritual gifts, but rather that you may prophesy. Paul said to the church down in Corinth, in regards to those spiritual gifts, that he says, follow after, follow after this. You're going to pursue this. This kind of love is something we're going to pursue. This love we're going to have one for another. Put it on. Pursue it is what we are encouraged to do by Paul. And then we're abound in this love. Uh, my friend, not only do we put it on, not only do we pursue it, but we ought to abound. This love ought to be, uh, my friend, in abundance in our heart. Listen to the Bible. In Philippians chapter 1, verse number 9, he says, And this I pray, that your love may abound. He said, Yet more and more in knowledge and all, and in all judgment. And so therefore we're abound in this love. First Thessalonians talks about this abounding in this love. In 1 Thessalonians 3, verse number 12, the Bible says, And the Lord make you increase and abound in love one toward another and toward all men, even as we do toward you. And so we see this love. This love, the Bible says, it ought to be in abundance in regards to the way we treat one another. And then we encourage as Christians to continue in this love. In 1 Timothy 2, and the verse is number 15. Listen to Paul talking to his young son, the Gospel of Timothy. He said, notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing. If, talking about those, those women, uh, if they stay in their role, because he had already dealt with the idea that a woman cannot preach. We started in verse 11 and following. That's another lesson now. But I'll go there if I have to. But, but he's dealing with this in the context, talking about the women, that the, the women uh, that keep silent in the churches, and he mentions the idea that cannot use the authority over the man. He, Paul was addressing this, and talking about the reason he goes to explain why a woman was never called to preach. And then Paul said, not the same. She shall be saved if she stay in her role. And what's her role? The, the role, he talked about the idea of childbearing. That's her role. He said, if they continue in faith, and love and holiness with sobriety and with a and with a level head. And so he's telling the idea of this, uh, Paul mentioned to Timothy that women ought to continue in this love. In Hebrews 13 and verse number 1, the Bible said, let brotherly love continue. So this is something that, my friend, is not just a one-time thing, but this is a continuation of the Christian journey. This is something that we must do and constantly do over and over again, showing love for one another. But then also this love that saints ought to have each other. We ought to provoke one another, encourage one another, and be able, my friend, to help one another along with this love. Second Corinthians 8 and verse number 7, Paul said, therefore, he said, as you are bound in everything, Paul said, in faith, he says, and utterance, and knowledge, and in all diligence, and he watches now, abound in your love to us. See that you abound in this grace also. Second Corinthians 9 and verse number 2 abound in it. Paul said, For I know the forwardness of your mind, for which I boast of you to them of Macedonia, 
Paul says that Achaia was ready a year ago and your zeal had provoked very many. Talk about the idea of their love for him and how they sought to help him. Paul says that zeal, it, what it did, it encouraged other people to do the very same thing. Hebrews 10, 25, the Bible says, let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. This love we ought to have, it ought to be contagious. This love ought to run from heart to heart where individuals in the body of Christ, we see the love that others are showing and it encourages us to love our brothers and sisters as well. We have to be sincere in this love. The Bible is plain. In Romans 12, in verse number 9, Romans 12, in verse 9, the Bible says, let love be without dissimulation. Let that love be true. Let there be no hypocrisy in this love. He said, the Bible says, abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. This love ought to be sincere. The love we ought to have. This second Corinthians chapter 6, verse number 6, the Bible says, But pureness, by knowledge, by long suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Ghost, by love unfeigned. My friend, this is sincere love yeah. that we ought to have. This is what Paul was encouraging the church at Rome and also at Corinth in regards to having this kind of love. And again, second Corinthians 8, verse number 8, he says, I speak not by commandment, but by occasion of the forwardness, the forwardness of others, and to prove the sincerity, he says, of your love. 1 John 3, 18, he says, My little children, let us not love in word nor in tongue, but let's love in deed, and let's love in truth. My friend, God bless you today. I hope, trust, and pray that this message will find a place in our hearts, that we will consider the message, look at ourselves, and see whether or not we are where God wants us to be. And if we're not, then we have the courage, my friend, even today, to have a change of heart and let God rule and reign in our lives and in our hearts. God bless you today. Maybe there's somebody who's listening this morning. And my friend, you're not a Christian. You're not a child of God. And I say this to you, my friend, you're living beneath your God-given privilege. You need to be a Christian. You need to be a follower of Jesus Christ. Because my friend, there's going to come a day when all the world is going to be judged. There's going to come a day, my friend, just as sure as there's life, there's going to be a judgment. And God assured us in Acts 17, verse 31, He assured us that there will be a day in which Christ will judge the world in righteousness. And the Bible said that God is going to judge him by that man, Jesus Christ. And God gave us assurance by raising him from the dead. Mm -hmm. Hebrews 9, 27, the Bible says, And it's appointed unto man who wants to die, but, Bible, but after this, but after this, the judgment. And my friend, it's an appointment that you and I cannot break. We're going to have to stand before God. And I think what a terrible thought it would be to stand before God in a man-made religion that God did not, did not authorize. Yeah. Being in a man-made, uh, my friend, the denomination that you cannot find written on the pages of inspiration. To be able to stand there, my friend, on the claims of man, thinking somehow man, man-made religion, is going to get you into God's heaven. My friend, it won't happen. you got to understand, if we're going to go to heaven, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man can come to the Father but by me. And so, if you want to be saved today, if you want your sins to be remitted, you must hear how Jesus died, was buried, rose again the third day. The Bible is plain in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 1 through 4. That's the simple facts of the gospel. This gospel must be heard and believed. That's why Peter said in Acts 15 and verse number 9, we've been much disputed. Peter wrote verse number 7. Peter rose and said, Many brethren, you know how good a while ago God made choice that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. And then he must repent of his sin. Acts 17 30. Time of his ignorance, God went there, but now command all men everywhere to repent. It's time to turn toward God. Then, my friend, you must confess. Confess the faith. Confess the fact that your faith is in Jesus Christ. Confess that faith that you say you believe. That Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Romans 10, verse 9 and verse number 10. When the heart man believeth unto righteousness, the mouth of confession is made yeah. unto salvation. And then you must be baptized in water for the remission of his sins. Acts 2.38. Right there, Peter said to them, repent and be baptized 
every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for remission of your sin. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. This promise unto you to your children. Many that are far and the Lord our God shall call. Bible said, they that are glad to receive the word. May the words he testified as yours say, save yourself from this untoward generation. Then they that glad to receive the word, they were baptized. And the same day, they were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Drop down to verse 47 of Acts chapter 2. And the Bible said, praising God, having faith with all the people, and the Lord added to the church, the church, only built one church. Only has authority to add to the one church that he built. Because he's the head of it. And he's married to it. And my friend, he's going to come back one day for it. And you and I must be a member of it if we want to be saved. The Bible said, praise the God, have given all of you that the Lord added to the church daily. Yes. Such as should be saved. Be saved today. The Lord be waiting, my friend, for you to say yes to him. If you're a member of the body of Christ, you're going to stray, come back to Christ. The process of repentance, confession, and prayer. If you need prayer, you know what you need to do. Let your request be made known. We will. We will pray for you. God bless you, my friend. But make sure we're mindful. We must love one another. Say good morning, gentlemen. This part of our service is known as the uh, collection. It was the Apostle uh, Paul that that's just known in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, beginning at verse number 1. Paul said, now concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given order to the church of Galatia, even so do ye. Upon the first day of the week, let everyone lay by in store that which God hath prospered him with, that there will be no gathering. There will be no gathering when I come. Uh, the elders have made provision for, for us to give uh, during this, uh, this uh, uh, Corona-19 pandemic, that if you want to give, that you can do so by going online to the Hilltop website, or uh, you can stop by the church. There's envelopes out there as well, or you can mail you can mail your lay by hand uh, to the church. Uh, we have a following member that already have, have, have uh, sent in the lay by. We have uh, Sister the Blue, Brother Sister C Wright, Brother Merriweather, and Brother Brother Fox also sent in and sent in the lay by. Let us pray. Our Father our God, we thank you again for blessing us, for keeping us, for uh, watching over and protecting us. Father, we thank you, Lord, for still uh, providing with us with income, Father, to uh, support our families as well. Amen. Father, we pray now, Lord, that we uh, give back to you a portion that you have blessed us with. Thank you again, Father, for all that you have done. Father, we pray, Lord, that these monies that's collected uh, will be used, Father, for the furthest, uh, for the furthest building, building your kingdom. Father, bless the hands, Father, that we'll be administrating these money, Father, that uh, everything be done to your, to, to your glory and to your honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Church, this part of our service is known as the uh, communion. Uh, we know that uh, the Apostle Paul lets us know in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, beginning at uh, verse, number, uh, verse number 23, uh, the Apostle Paul said, For I have received of the Lord that which I also deliver unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken uh, for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner, he took the cup, and when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye, as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. And with that said, we will have prayer for the bread and for the cup. Father God, we thank you again for your daughter and son, uh, Jesus Christ. Father, that gave his uh, life for a ransom for us all on that uh, Calvary's cross. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the, uh, for the bread that represents his broken body and for the uh, cup, Father, that uh, represents his shed of blood on Calvary's cross. Father, pray, Lord, that we uh, partake in this communion. Father, we always do it in, in remembrance of thee. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. 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 To the church, we're grateful again for this awesome opportunity we have to worship God and we trust and pray that we will encourage others uh, who uh, have an opportunity to worship with us, that they will, in fact, take advantage of that. Worship with us here 
Ahmed Hilltop as we continue to strive to uh, do things according to the Bible, the word um, the word of God, and worship God in a way um, that is pleasing and acceptable to Him. But just quickly, by way of announcement, we'll just be mindful, we can keep the church mindful of the opportunities that we have um, in regards to the, the radio program, and that we trust that you'll be mindful to listen. Um, if you have not listened uh, before, please take advantage of that. The, uh, WSR 1490 AM uh, is a 7 AM radio program, and also it comes on again at 9.30. Uh, my friend, and then the, as you know, it also will come on again at, at the 10.30 um, hour as well. And so be mindful of that. And then Monday through Friday, um, you can listen in from 11.30, right, 11.30, in regards to the Minutes That Matter, uh, comes on Monday through Friday. And then on Saturday, uh, 1.15 to 1.45, we have um, those Saturday sermons. And so as you, if you pay close attention to what I just said, every day, Every day, Hilltop is on the radio, and so you can get your spiritual, uh, your, 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 your spiritual fix, uh, my friend, every day um, by listening in um, to the um, to these broadcasts. If you just need that uh, that little boost, that little energy, that, that encouraging word, then you tune in uh, to these various um, ways in which we are trying our best to encourage and get the word out, and also go to the website, uh, my friend, and read the bulletin. The, the minister's pen is there. And then also um, the other um, sermons and different things are there on the website you'll be able to access. And so please take advantage of that, these spiritual tools um, that are um, available to you um, during, these, during these times. And we continue just to pray. We pray for one another. We pray for our world, uh, my friend. We pray that soon we'll be able to come together again as a family, be able to see one another again. And so we will pray for that. And don't forget also uh, on Wednesday. I lost Will uh, Wednesday nights at 7 o'clock. If you have Zoom, uh, my friend, you, you'll be able, the information will be sent to you by the e-blast in regards to how you can connect with us through the Zoom, or, or you can also uh, participate in that Wednesday night Bible study uh, by calling. Uh, and so that information can be available to you. And if you would like that information, you may not be a member here at Hilltop, do not receive our e-blast. If you just call, uh, during, um, the, during the day uh, here at Hilltop, I would be more than happy to assist you um, in regards to um, hooking you up with the, um, the information that you would need to be able to join us uh, on, uh, on Wednesday nights for our Bible, our Bible study. And all of these times are crucial. All of these are uh, so, so meaningful. And, and let's just continue to reach out to one another. And, and Elder Ben Miller had mentioned on Wednesday how, you know, uh, we had... Brother Charles McClendon to come and, and to share with us. And we, we don't want us to forget that. We don't want to forget the powerful um, the days he spent with us, the powerful messages he gave us while he was with us. And let's make sure we use that and utilize all of that great material and information that we will receive um, to try to share with somebody else because it is tested and proven. And so we're so thankful for um, God using Brother McClendon as he did um, to come and to bless us um, like he did. Let's continue to pray. For those individuals who are in the hospital, continue to pray and we're mindful of individuals who are not sick in our prayer list. Let's continue to pray for them as we get that list um, that comes to, our, to us weekly. Let's look at those names and let's pray for them. Let's call them by name um, that God will just uh, move in their behalf, on their behalf in a very special, in a special way. Let's pray for our world, that God will bless our doctors and pray for our health care uh, personnel and all of those individuals. Um, who are doing what they can do um, so we can live the life that we live um, at this point. We're grateful for our nurses, we're grateful for our doctors, we're grateful um, for even folk that work in their grocery store. That we're just grateful for um, and that God will continue to bless them um, as well. We're actually really great if he'll come and lead us uh, in, a, uh, in another congregation of him and then the brother who's assigned will come um, and lead us uh, in our closing and our closing prayer. Let's sing about love. Love lifted me, 345. Love lifted me. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore. Very deep they sang with him, sinking to right no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry.
give ever to him I cling in his blessed presence live ever his praises sing love so mighty and so true merits my soul's best song faithful love makes service to to him be Until then, know the hilltop is here for you. <laughs>